The following morning, the honeymoon couples left early for their tour of the ancient sites on the west bank of Luxor. At the same time, a Swiss tour group was also leaving the hotel. Francisca Widmer-Muller and her husband Felix had arrived the night before. We took off very early in the morning because you don't want to be there in the midst of the day when full bright sunlight. When we crossed the bridge from east to west, we just happened to see the sunrise, which was wonderful. It's beautiful, just gorgeous place. The mixture between the, the, the nature, the Nile, the desert, and the, the history, of course, and all the monuments, it's just uh, unique and it's an extraordinary place. So, I'm, in a way, I, I fell in love with that shape. Rosalie and Cecile were with another tour group, also on their way to Queen Hatshepsut's temple, the highlight of their journey. Karina persuaded her mum to take a taxi to the temple. It meant an extra hour in bed. On the way, they stopped briefly at the Colossus of Memnon to take what would be their only photo that day. By 8.10 a.m., the Japanese, the British, and two Swiss tour groups had converged at Queen Hatshepsut's temple. At the entrance, they passed the temple's only armed guard. There was one group at the entrance ahead of us. They stopped because they wanted to take more pictures. Um, our tour guide, who was a little bit in a hurry, said, well, you can still take pictures when we get back, so let's rush up to the second level and see the wonderful murals up there. Queen Hatshepsut was the greatest female pharaoh, famous for deceiving her subjects by dressing as a bearded man. She had her spectacular funerary temple built into the rock face. Beautiful reliefs depicting her reign were carved and painted on the walls of the second tier. This is where most tourists congregate. By 8.30, groups from several countries had set off with their guides. There were some 400 tourists and Egyptians in and around the site. Satko and her group were busy taking pictures of the temple. Swiss tourist Beatrice Nigg noticed one of the newlyweds. I remember seeing a really pretty Japanese girl. She was sitting on a bench, dressed all in white. I imagined that she was on her honeymoon. No one noticed the arrival of a blue taxi at 8.35. Six young men got out. They were wearing military-style uniforms, red headbands, and carrying holdalls. At the gate, the men were asked for their tickets. The last man reached into his holdall, took out an automatic weapon, and shot the armed guard and two temple staff. Uh, I realized that I was behind my group because they had already gone into Hathor Temple, that little annex. And I ran, and when I ran to that um, Hawthor Temple entrance, the first um, shots were already heard. Immediately you knew this is something really serious, but your brain was still looking for the easy explanation. Everyone was panicking, shouting, terrorists, terrorists. What I saw was the Egyptians running away. And that made me scared because I thought if they run away, it must be something quite severe. And then instantly you realize it's about us. We have to hide. Somehow I had the feeling I had to get away. I didn't want to wait for the others to react. 
I realized I couldn't find Felix anymore because everybody was like running around in this limited space. Then I saw Felix climbing a little wall in the back of Hathor temple. My wife followed me and we climbed over that wall and uh, there was a kind of little niche on the outside of the temple and we hid there. And then Mr. Muller and his wife came into the same hideaway as my friend and me. So there were four of us, crouching behind a wall. Of course we heard all the screaming and we realized they kill us if we are not quiet. There was a deathly silence between us. No one dared breathe. The whole valley was filled with shots and cries and there was echo going back and forth. It was really disturbing because you couldn't localize where the attacks actually was going on. Was somebody in your back? Was somebody in your front? Was somebody to your left, to your right? You just had no idea. I had the feeling it went on for ages. We wondered why no police were coming, why absolutely nobody turned up to stop it. It was unbelievable. What was going on must have been so horrific. The shooting then, in a way, started to temper off, I would say, after about 15 to 20 minutes. After the last shot, it was still screaming, and, of course, now we know that they also had knives, and, of course, we didn't hear the knives, or we heard the, the screams. Then it was totally quiet. Uh, you had not the slightest idea what's going on now. Around 9.20, with still no sign of the police, the terrorists made their getaway by hijacking a tourist coach. The driver was local Egyptian, Hagag Nahas. Six men ran in front of the bus, firing guns in the air, so I had to stop. They forced me to turn around and take them to the Valley of the Kings. They wanted to kill the maximum amount of people. Back at the temple, the survivors waited for 20 minutes before they dared emerge from hiding. I know that I would probably never be able to deal with what I would see. So, of course, you were prepared to see the worst. And what we saw was the worst, yes. Yes, it was all these people you saw when they were alive. They were laying there. And then I saw the Japanese girl again, still sitting in the same spot, but just dead. On the hijacked coach, Hagag Nahas was trying to avoid tourist sites and look for help. After 30 minutes, he spotted a police checkpoint and slowed. The terrorists realized that the drive had taken them the wrong way and took their revenge. One of them hit me in the shoulder with the butt of his rifle. He hit me so hard that my shoulder broke. I completely lost the use of this arm. Alerted by frantic calls from the temple, the checkpoint police opened fire. The six terrorists jumped off the bus and ran into the nearby hills, chased by police and local Egyptians. A tourist captured the moment on their camera. With this gun battle raging around them, Tourists and Egyptians took shelter in the entrance of a nearby tomb. 